this video, I'm going to share some of the secrets you need to know to painting foliage in plein air. It's part of a much longer video on my Patreon, but more on that later. Working transparently in areas and having other areas that have more of a build of a paint is one of the ways that we can work with our oil painting to make an interesting surface, interesting textures. This being relatively washed in right now, that's going to be easy to go back in and paint over when I have more paint. I should say one of the things I am doing with this painting, similar to some of my other paintings, is I am working back to front. This really big brush right now is very helpful for calligraphy, I guess you might call it. So putting down paint marks and making sure that they look nice and interesting from the very beginning. Locking in a false value of color and I'm going to try to focus on the patterning and the shapes of the foliage, but that's going to be, it's going to make my life a lot easier when I finally get to painting the yellows or the greens on top. So let me just take a whole bunch of yellow ochre and a tiny bit of cadmium yellow. Start using that yellow scrub in some of the areas of the foliage. I'm going to try to not overwork this painting by leaving the freshness of these more washy brush strokes. And I'm being very careful to pay attention to the little shapes. Often it's the abstraction that's really going to make things fall into place. The way to paint foliage is by counting and as slowly and methodically and as accurately as you can, painting every little tiny shape as you see it abstractly. And if you capture that abstraction, you will capture the realism. It's good to first be very slow when you're making these decisions, but eventually you get faster over time. The other thing that is really helpful about just painting exactly what you see, you can't get lost. If you don't know what kind of tree it is that you're painting, that's fine. If you just paint the contour as you see it, the shapes of color as you see them, you're gonna make a nice painting. You don't need to know what types of tree, what types of bushes, what type of leaves those are. You just need to be able to paint optically. And that's why I think painting optically is really the foundation of good painting. And as we, you know, go forward in our own painting journey and learn about painting and learn how to paint. I think the best, easiest thing to do first is to be able to paint what we see really well and then to learn all those other things on top. One of the things that I do constantly to observe the color, observe the value, observe the scene is I blur my eyes. I loosen my vision, so to speak. It's a similar effect as if I was just taking my glasses off, which I can do, but I'm not sure all of you guys can do it probably count yourself lucky if you can't but honestly having bad vision as a painter sometimes that makes your vision to be a bit more holistic but if we're just trying to capture the blobs of color accurately if we can capture the blobs of color accurately we're gonna be off to the races with a pretty decent painting so we're gonna carefully include those sky holes making sure not to make them too light in value. Also, there might be little things like little twigs or little bits of foliage that are semi-transparent that from afar we can't really see, but also optically blend the value to be a little bit darker. So that's what's happening in here. There's like a million little sky holes between these branches and those branches are the same color as this tree trunk, but they're so far away that they optically blend into that value. And the key to these leaves, I'm using this really small brush And I'm starting by counting out the leaves, looking at their exact shapes. I want to reach back, start mixing some of these greens. I'm going to reach for some Viridian, a little bit of yellow ochre, and that makes this really golden green color. And with this green and with this really big brush, I'm going to start being very conscious of how I'm starting to paint it. I'm not just going in painting it, licking it the exact same way. Reach for a darker value. The way we make those transitions where there are effects of optics, say 
the edge of these trees or the sky holes being darker, we don't make them by blending in with our brush, but we actually blend in a slightly darker value and use that slightly darker value throughout our painting. Best practice is that we're mixing that color rather than mixing it in. Don't paint the tree, paint the forest. Well, part of that is, it, it means that you don't paint every single little last detail, but part of the secret of painting the forest and not the tree is by painting maybe one, two, three, four trees, just a couple, and having just those couple trees will imply the other hundred or thousand of trees that we can see in an overlooking vista. So I'm going to try to find a couple areas where I can really draw out some of the leaves. There are a bunch of these little uh, just twigs coming up. So might as well include them. Again, you don't have to know what the plant is. You just need to be able to paint the shapes well enough. But if you do know what the plant is, then you'll be able to see the shapes better than you otherwise would. And that's how anatomy helps us in portraiture. If you're able to draw the face perfectly well by just looking at the shapes, maybe it's a very easy shape, that'll help. But having an anatomy to grab onto, it aids us in our ability of observation. I think I'll get some flicks of pure burnt sienna. A couple flicks in here. Maybe a bit of cadmium orange into that burnt sienna because some of those shadows of these leaves are really chromatic. And that'll also just further help me accent the color Add a little bit more variety in this painting. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, consider checking out the full hour-long tutorial on my Patreon. I go into the full step-by-step -step process from picking out the composition, drawing it in on the canvas, blocking in the large masses of color, and everything you need to know to actually finish the painting. I include the photos of my painting and the reference in case you want to follow along, and I have a bunch of other planner tutorials on there and even a one-on-one -on -one mentorship tier. If that sounds interesting, check out my Patreon or just keep watching the YouTube videos. I have a mailing list for in-person workshops if that sounds interesting too. That's about it. Thanks and see you in the next one.